Hello guys, um, you're welcome to this lecture. We want to start looking at uh, vector spaces. Okay, so, so far we've looked at uh, groups, um, of course, binary operations, then groups. We looked at rings and fields um, and all the you know, minor topics under those. And so it's time to start looking at vector spaces. Okay. Um, so in this lecture, I'm going to um, give you a brief introduction of what our vector space is. Um, and then I'll give you a formal definition of it. So the introduction will basically be a review of what uh, you already know from your uh, classes, um, some other classes. Um, and then we'll look at subspaces, linear combination. Um, we'll look at the linear dependence and independence um, of uh, vectors or elements of the set. Uh, we'll look at linear transformations and then the kernel uh, or the null space, okay? Uh, so these are things we'll cover. This will cover a couple of uh, lectures or a couple of videos. So this is just an overview of what we'll be covering. Okay. So for um, for this lecture, I'll basically give a brief uh, introduction and a review of what you know. Um, in high school, for instance, you are introduced or first year introduced to vectors, um, and we know that you know uh, vectors are basically you have you have um, any entity. I would say a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction is often called um, a vector, okay? So we've, we've come across this before. Um, and often we'll represent the vector by, uh, so in the plane, right? In the plane, we'll represent the vector by, you know, uh, some arrow like that from a point, let's say point A to point what? To point B, where the direction of um, the vector AB will be the direction of this arrow and the magnitude will be the length of, um, of the arrow, right? Okay, so that is a, that is a vector. Uh, and we've, uh, we've seen this uh, before, okay? Now, we want to look at uh, various things you can do with vectors, right? Uh, you can add two vectors, right? So if I have a vector AB, I have another vector, let's call that, um, you know, uh, CD. Uh, point is how do you combine the two vectors? If this is uh, represented by u, this is a v. Um, how do you how do you have combine u and v? What do you what do you get? And how do you do that? All right. And also another interesting one we want to look at is um, how do you multiply a vector? Right. If I have a vector and multiply by some constant alpha, um, how do I do that? And what do I get? Okay, so these are things that, uh, for for the most part, you are familiar with, and then we'll look at we'll look, we'll look at uh, some of these ones as a way of introducing what vector spaces are. Okay, so for instance, we know that uh, when two vectors are added um, to get a new one, well, the resultant vector actually represents the combined effects of the original vectors. So I have two vectors that are. Um, if you like, that are emanating from a particular point, then the sum of the two vectors will give you, uh, if I combine the two effects, right, what I get, that will be the resultant or the sum, okay? And the resultant is often called the sum of the two vectors. And that combination of adding two vectors can be done using the so-called um, parallelogram law, right? Uh, so I'm sure you've, uh, you've seen this before. So um, I have, I have a vector u, I have a vector v, uh, to add them, I, I, um, I form a parallelogram, right? So this is parallel to that, this is parallel to that, and the sum will be the diagonal, right? So uh, from O to A here, this vector here is the sum of u and v, okay? And you could do that uh, algebraically as well, right? So instead of adding this vectorially, you could, um, you have u, u has, um, if you like, coordinates a1 and b1, v has b1, uh, this is um, b1, okay, so this, this should be um, b1, b2, this should be um, a1, a2, okay, so a1, a2, b1, b2, you can add them so that u plus v is equal to, all you do is you add the um, coordinates, right? So a1 plus b1, and then you have a2 plus b2, 
Okay, so we, we've seen this before, we know this. Okay. So that is the um, the algebraic sum of the two vectors, and that will give you this um, this uh, diagonal uh, vector here. Okay, so what is here is basically what I've described here. You can also add uh, vectors algebraically, okay, in the plane. Good. Um, so often you assume that um, the vectors are coming from the origin, right? You have a, a reference point called the origin where you're assuming that the vectors are coming from there. So if I write U is this, often A1, uh, A2 here will be the, uh, the end point, right, of the vector. And then the origin will be, um, let's say, um, zero, zero here. Okay, but instead of saying the, the end point of a vector, we just write a vector and we assume that, you know, it's coming from the, uh, it's emanating from the origin. Okay, mm -hmm. so often that is, um, that is what is uh, used. Okay, so basically what is in this slide is describing what I just explained to you. Okay, good. Now, the other um, operation that is often performed on vectors is, um, multiplying a vector by a scalar, right? A constant, a number, okay? And that operation is called scalar multiplication, okay? So in other words, if I have, um, if I have a vector, uh, the vector A here, right? Or U, okay? Well, if I multiply this by um, some constant, let's say K, a positive constant, let's say two, for instance, what I'm actually doing is uh, increasing the length or elongating this uh, vector without changing the direction, right? So if I multiply u by um, k, I'm just going to get, um, if you like, a longer vector here. Well, if k is positive, then um, u and k u will be in the same direction, right? Whereas if k was negative, then I will be moving in the opposite direction. So if k was negative, so, um, and I had uh, a vector that is going this way, right, and I multiply by uh, a negative k, then I'll be going in the opposite direction, right? So that is, uh, that is the effect of multiplying a vector by uh, a scalar quantity, okay? And it's referred to as a scalar multiplication. So these are the two main um, concepts that we'll be dealing with, okay? So that is basically what I have here. If the vector u is represented by an arrow, then vector k u, right, where k is some real number, is represented by an arrow in the same direction. Uh, if k is positive in the opposite direction, if k is negative. And the length of the vector is basically the magnitude of the um, constant k here multiplying by, multiply by the, um, the length of u, right? Absolute value of u. Um, if you have two non-zero vectors, say u and v, we say they are parallel, right? If one is equal to the constant multiple of the other one, right? If k is non-zero. Okay, so again, uh, we've seen, we've seen, um, sorry, let me get uh, rid of this. Okay, so uh, you've, you've seen this before, okay? Um, again, uh, in terms of uh, algebra, if I have U here as A1 and A2, and I multiply by a constant, basically what I'm doing is multiply each of the um, coordinates here by a constant. So if I multiply k by um, u by k, you're just going to have k times a1 and then k times a2, okay? Okay, so these things we have um, introduced basically on the plane, right? On the plane. So if I have a plane, um, x, y coordinates, I can have a vector, which is an arrow. I can add the two vectors. If I have a vector, I can multiply by um, a scalar, okay? Okay, so if you look in the plane, in fact, vectors um, with addition and scalar multiplication will obey about eight properties, okay? So these are the eight properties that um, describe vectors, vector addition and scalar multiplication in the plane, all right? Okay, so um, the first one is basically the fact that vector addition is commutative, right? U plus V, if U and V are vectors, is equal to V plus U, and also is associative, okay? And also, um, there's uh, a zero vector such that if I add any vector to the zero vector, I get back the original vector, okay? So a zero vector must uh, be present. 
uh, for all vectors u, there's a vector v such that if I add vector v to u, I get a zero vector. Okay. So if you like, u here is like um, an additive inverse, right, of vector u. Okay. Now, if you remember, uh, again, this is in the plane. Okay. In the plane, this hold. Uh, again, these four, these four properties are actually they actually form an abelian group, right? Under addition, if you remember um, the properties of a group, okay? So under addition, these four are basically uh, the abelian group. Um, so there are other four conditions that are properties for of vectors, that if I multiply one by a vector u, I get u, all right? If I have two um, real numbers, a and b, I multiply them, and then I take the result multiplied by u, is the same as this operation. Take one of them times u, multiply by the other one. All right. And also, there is the left distributive law hold right for vectors. So a is a real number multiplied by the sum of two vectors. I can rewrite this as a u plus a v. Um, also, you know, there's a left distribution. But in this case, I'm adding the real numbers and multiplying by a vector u, and I get that. Okay. So in the plane vectors, vector addition and scalar multiplication really um, uh, usually obey these, um, they obey these eight, these eight properties, okay? So these are important, all right? So again, these are, this, this will help us <clears throat> have an idea of what vector spaces are. We haven't defined vector spaces yet, but you will see that these properties fall under uh, the definition of what a vector space is, okay? Now, these are in a plane, but <clears throat> you can actually show that in space, all right, vectors, vector addition and scalar multiplication also, um, also uh, hold, right? Uh, these properties hold for vector addition and scalar multiplication in space, not just in a plane, okay? So for instance, maybe a 3D uh, 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 space, they, they still hold, okay? And that is, uh, that is one of the important things you should, uh, you should keep in mind, okay? So these are also true, that's what I just wrote here. These are also true for vectors in space rather than in a plane, okay? And of course, these results of addition and scalar multiplication can be used to write equations um, of lines and of planes in a space, in space, okay? So um, any mathematical structure, right? If you have a mathematical structure um, that really, that obeys these eight properties is called a vector space, okay? I'll give you a formal definition of that, okay? Um, but before I, um, I do that, I'll do that in, the, um, in another video. This is basically a short introduction, but you can, you can really tell that in a plane, if um, a structure disobeys or violates any of these eight, then that structure is not a vector space. For instance, if I give you um, a set, let's, let's come up with a set S, uh, is a set with um, A, B, or X, Y, right? Let's take this set, X, Y, right? Such that X is greater than zero and Y is greater than zero. Okay, let X and Y be real numbers. And you have this in the plane. Well, obviously, um, the set S here, S here together with, um, you know, addition, right? vector addition and scalar multiplication, this set will not be a vector space, right? Again, I will define vector space formally very soon, but this will not be based on just these eight properties we've seen. For instance, it violates eight, okay? X, remember that this, um, this thing here is basically this, this line. So let me, let me do this. Uh, okay, my... Uh, All right, so let's let's get rid of this and try to uh, and try to uh, write something here. So I'm trying to get my pen to uh, sketch something for you. Okay, so let's try this. Right. Okay. So basically, this set here, x y, where x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. Right. Y is positive is basically here, right? That is this, this set, this, uh, this region in the plane, the token of this region here, right? 
okay, is basically this region here in space. But x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, which means that zero is not part of this set. You see, if I write this, I know that zero is not part because x has to be greater than zero and y is greater than zero, both are positive. And so zero, 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 the set zero here is not an element of S. But to have a vector space, right? To have a vector space, you need zero, right? There must be a zero in the set, okay? So in the plane, if you are given the set, um, together with vector addition and scalar multiplication, this set will not be a vector space because zero is not part of it, okay? Again, keep in mind that when we say zero here, it's not always zero, it depends on the set. So if you are dealing with you know, 2D vectors, then the zero will be zero, zero. If you are dealing with matrices, matrices, then zero here, the zero vector, right, will be the zero matrix, zero, zero. For instance, a two, 2D matrix will be zero, 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 right? Will be the, uh, will be the, uh, will be the zero, okay? Okay, so it's a notation. All right, but you have the idea of what it means to have a zero. It's the same with the scalar, um, the additive inverse, right? The additive inverse is not um, necessarily, it's basically the negative, right? The negative of the vector that you have. Again, when we come talking about vector spaces uh, proper, know that the vector will be the elements of the set, not necessarily a vector as we know it here, okay? So when we define a vector space, and we, I will refer to a vector, keep in mind that the vector is not necessarily a vector with an arrow that you can imagine. Vectors in vector spaces basically refers to elements of the set. The elements are called vectors, but they are not really, they are physical quantities vectors that we know, okay? So keep that in mind. So in the next uh, section, we want to, I will define vector spaces formally, and then we'll look at some examples of, uh, of vector spaces. All right. Okay, so that's what we're going to do um, uh, next.